Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, Durango Hydroponics. Uh, please subscribe to my channel, help us spread the word about the channel, and thank you for watching my videos. Today I want to talk to you guys about fertilizers. And uh, last time I made a video about fertilizers not too long ago. I'm trying something new, I'm trying to make it a little easier and uh, explain it a little better for people that, have, that are studying to play with hydroponics specifically. Um, so I want to talk to you, you guys about the nutrient types first. So we have what's called macronutrients that are composed by the nitrogen, phosphor, and potassium. And then also there's a second set of macronutrients, uh, calcium, sulfur, and magnesium. These are what's called the macronutrients and these are in the fertilizer in uh, relatively high quantities. There is the other ones that are the micronutrients and are composed by the boron, chlorine, manganese, iron, zinc, copper, molybdenum, and nickel. These are present also in the fertilizers, but they are in very minute quantities. Uh, both of them are essential for plant uh, growth and uh, development. So usually the fertilizers that we buy for the plants contain all these uh, elements. As far as uh, fertilizers, there's two types. There's solid fertilizers uh, and within the solids there is soluble and insoluble fertilizers. The soluble are the ones that we usually use in hydroponics and you can buy those and they're easy to dissolve in the water. The insoluble ones are technically not insoluble, but they um, get um, they incorporate into the ground at a very slow rate. So you usually apply this directly to soil and the insoluble ones. There's also liquid fertilizers that you can apply on a variety on, of places, uh, soil or hydroponics and um, they also come in different formulations so we usually um, buy liquid ones for hydroponics although there is solid ones too uh, which is actually what i use i use solid fertilizers from the hydroponics and they're just easily um, soluble in water as far as the fertilizer formulas there is different formulas for different vegetables and as an example, I have these ones here. Tomatoes require 201838 NPK. So it's nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Um, that's the optimum quantities for tomatoes. Lettuce uh, varies a little bit. There's a 241536. For peppers and herbs, you need 271140. Usually, um, there are some people that use specific formulations for specific um, vegetables, especially if you are going into an industrial scale or a big scale. Uh, you want to be as specific as possible. But if you're just having fun with it, a tomato formula will work fine with most of the plants that we plant in at home or as a hobby. The, there's other there's two other things that are very important when planting and they have to do with the fertilizer or the liquids that we use, especially in hydroponics, which is the pH and the PPM, which is parts per million. So different plants require different pH and different concentrations of parts per million of the fertilizers. So for example, I have here, if you have uh, peppers, peppers require a pH between 5.8 and 6.3. And uh, the parts per million that they can take are 1400 to 2100, depending on the stage of the plant. And we'll talk about that a little more later. Uh, lettuce, lettuce is a little different. It's 5.5 to 6.5 for the pH. And it takes between 6, 6, 560 and 840 parts per million. Basil, which is another I think that is popular in the kitchen. Uh, uh, the pH is the same as the lettuce and the parts per million are 700 to 1120. 
parts per million. So these are different stages and we'll talk about that because some of the concentrations you cannot apply when the plants are very young. There's also general use fertilizers. The general use fertilizers usually have a balanced NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And um, not always they do, but some of the time, or actually most of the time, they do. Um, you can find these in different concentrations. So, for example, you can find 222s, 555s, 1010s, 1010s, and uh, different ones. Also, there's 20s and other quantities. And they usually have a, a balanced NPK. There are some exceptions to that. Some of the uh, manufacturers promote um, different fertilizers for different stages of the plant. So, for example, uh, some with high nitrogen content for um, developing more leaves and, and others with low nitrogen, nitrogen quantities to help them flower or fruit. So that's, that's, that's um, what you find usually at the source. There's also uh, soluble and insoluble ones as far as the general use fertilizers. Um, when you use these ones, it's important to follow the instructions uh, of the manufacturers uh, because um, sometimes, dep depending on the quantity of MPK that they contain, it uh, has to do with the quant quantity of fertilizers that you should apply to the plants. These um, uh, fertilizers come also, like I said, on different stages of growth that you can apply for the plants. So, like I said, the ones that have a high nitrogen content usually promote uh, development of leaves and uh, more green um, parts in the plant. And the ones that have a low nitrogen and usually high phosphorus or high potassium is for flowering or fruiting. With hydroponics, um, it is important to use specific formulations and not general use uh, fertilizers uh, because you want to be as precise as possible so that your hydroponic plants can grow healthy and get the nutrients they need. So as far as the concentration of nutrients, um, like I said, concentration of the nutrients or the, or the fertilizer is measured by parts per million, which is PPM. One of the dangers, and I wanted to list some of these, um, is the tendency for some of the people, especially the ones that were uh, that are getting started uh, with hydroponics is to overfeed or just in general to get started with plants uh, it's a tendency to overfeed plants usually we want to give them fertilizer too soon and that can be dangerous because you can actually kill them there is more plants that die for overfeeding therefore underfeeding uh, if you have a plant that is underfed um, you can correct that usually if you overfeed a plant uh, you're gonna kill it and there's no way back so uh, the seedlings when you um, uh, you should start feeding them is after they get the second set of leaves which are called true leaves uh, once they get the second set of leaves usually you can start giving them low concentrations of uh, fertilizer and we'll talk about that uh, but before that uh, you should only give them water. So I have a table here for uh, concentrations, uh, different concentrations or different stages of the concentrations that you should apply to the plants. So when a seedling comes out and it's just germinated and you have only the first set of leaves, uh, water will suffice. You don't need to add any nutrients. Water is more than enough. And actually, that's what you should give them, only water. For young plants, uh, so young plants would be plants that already have the second set of leaves or true leaves. Uh, you can add nutrients in low concentration, about 400 parts per million. If it is uh, in the soil, uh, you may want to use fertilizer and you want to use it very lightly. For mature plants, you can uh, apply in hydroponics 800 to 1,000 parts per million. Um, and in soil, you should follow the instructions of the manufacturer of the fertilizer. 
um, they would usually have indications how much you should use. For plants in production in hydroponics, you can apply between 1,200 and 2,000 parts per million. Um, again, in soil, you should follow instructions of the manufacturer. But this gives you an idea of the concentration of the fertilizers that you should be using for the plants at these different stages. Another thing that is very important with plants is the pH. Um, and although the pH is important in the soil, it is rarely an issue. Uh, there's occasions, and actually there's some plants, um, uh, for example, the berries that require a certain pH in the soil that if you don't have, they will not be growing very healthy. Uh, but for the most part, a soil pH in the soil is not an issue. Um, contrary to that, pH in hydroponics is very critical and it can be a very varied depending on the water that you use, how you get it, uh, if you get it from the city, if you get it from a well, if you get rainwater, all these changes the pH of the water. So it is important to maintain the, the water between the range that the plants need, which is 5.5 to 6.5. When you plant or when you put the water um, or the plants in the hydroponic solutions, uh, with time, uh, after a few days, after a few weeks sometimes, the pH may change. You should uh, periodically check it and see if the pH needs to be adjusted. Uh, some of the plants or some of the fertilizers are more susceptible to this. Uh, in occasions it won't change, but most of the time it will. So if you see that your plants are having issues, the first thing you should check is your P, the pH in your water for hydroponic um, uh, setups. I guess that's it. I wanted to um, talk about this and um, maybe give a little more information for the people that are getting started in hydroponics. If you have any suggestions, comments, or questions, please post them below the, the video and I will be happy to get back to you guys or incorporate some of the comments that you guys may have for me. Thank you. Uh, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and we will see you guys soon. Bye.